Uh, hello? Hi, I don't know if this is going to work now because I'm going to put you back down there and um, I'm just going to hop into bed and draw. I've actually got glasses, look. First time, first time wearing glasses when I'm uh, drawing. I think I'll be putting them on and off because I see colour better without them. Anyway, I'll um, face you down the way and hopefully you'll be able to see what it is that I'm painting. Once I get in under the bed, bed clothes here, hang on now. I hope the microphone is working like yesterday. Something happened, the microphone. Oh dearie me, I'm just trying to manoeuvre my way under the blankets. I wanted to say hello to you because I wasn't sure if um, Oh, it's all going pear shaped. I wasn't sure if uh, I'd managed to, to do that at the end. <coughs> Okay, it looks like you can see. I'll tell you what, I had the idea tonight that I would paint, hopefully without hitting the camera anymore, that I would paint the face of Samuel Beckett. The beautiful bone structure is uh, fierce appealing. I'm just going to put the microphone lead behind there now so I won't be shaking you, hopefully. Yeah, so there's um, this here is Samuel Beckett, and above him, one of um, one of his quotes: "Perhaps my best years are gone, but I wouldn't want them back, not with the fire in me now." Well, not with the fire in me now. Maybe my best years aren't yet gone because I'm not feeling so much the fire tonight. At least, at least not tonight, am I? Sometimes I do. Mm. Right, I'm sorry now you're shaking, Matt. I suppose it's because I'm. Uh, you're attached to the bed that I'm sitting in. Okay. Right, still it's going to be f a fairly calm I'm going to have to put on my glasses now to see his face more clearly. Oh, there's Maisie at the door, or else it's um, one of the cats. You'll be hearing more from them now, I bet you. Scrape, scratch at the door until I let them in. Okay, I'm kind of torn between whether I need the glasses or not. Let me see. I used to always say to folk, you know, it's no harm for it to be slightly blurry. This, the subject, whatever it is that you're painting, it's no harm if it's not completely clear. Because when you half close your eyes, half closing your eyes is uh, really helpful so that you see the darks and lights. Now I'm mixing the Van Dyke Brown with Ultramarine Blue. And I'd say that's, well, I'll put a bit of cadmium red in, warm them up a little bit. Right. Okay. I'll just keep checking every so often that you can actually see. Mm. Yeah, without the glasses still seems to be a better option for me. Okay, so I'll start with that. Tuft of hair. seem to be kind of pushing myself into things a little bit these days. But there's a part of me kind of feels like, you know, I'm happier when I've achieved something. Maybe when you're fully enlightened, you don't have to achieve something before you feel happy. But me being only partially enlightened, <laughs> partially enlightened, and me, you know, <coughs> yeah, so I think most of the time it's, e it's easier just to get into action, isn't it? Sometimes. Even though it's close to midnight. The reason I'm still awake right now and still um, energised is because I went and had a couple of coffees today and a couple of muffins. I put in a bit more ultramarine blue into that there, as you can probably see. 
and these are eye sockets that I've just done there and there's a shadow at the temple the shadow beneath the eye on this side. He does read as though his eyes are kind of grooved into his skull. He's got quite a penetrating gaze there, doesn't he? Might as well add a little bit of drama with the colour. No, no, I've just been out with Lily in the car. One of her favourite things to do these days is to go for a drive in the dark and sing. So she's got her playlist on her phone. Fortunately, you know, uh, I pretty much... I pretty much like all the, um, the girls music so they've each got the opportunity when they get in the car to link up their phone to the speakers and each one has got their own playlist of different things but they're actually really you know, good music I like their choice of music which is lucky So I've just been out with Lily, travelling around the country roads. I've been feeling a little bit like in between things these days, not kind of clear on what next really you know good enough for him but like at least at this in this moment there isn't anything riveting happening I'm kind of annoying myself a little bit actually because uh, I almost feel like I might turn this off because I'm kind of feeling not very happy with what I'm doing like I'm only doing it because I want to have a video that I can post for the newsletter and I'm just kind of feeling like I'm not following my genuine instincts and stuff but then to be honest with you that's often a voice that comes in when to just kind of quash any instinct I have at all and sure even a, even a partial instinct I think sometimes is helpful to follow rather than just give up and eat chocolate biscuits and watch something on the telly which was the option that was kind of slowly creeping its way in there especially when I look at the shape of this hatch it knows it feels like I'm making a bit of a mess of things here and then I know for me in this lark the main thing is kindness towards myself and whatever's happening, a bit of faith. So let's see. Mm. Let's just keep at it is the thing. May as well keep at it. As 
as Adrian says in the yoga, you've done the hard part now, you've shown up. You've, you've showed up for yourself. The hard part is over. And then she says, just trust me. So I need to find some part in myself I can trust. And you see, it's nearly midnight as well. It's because I've had all that coffee, I'd say that I'm still full of the joys. But in the morning, I'd be getting up earlier and has an appointment in the morning. And I said I'd drive her. And that means leaving at half eight. And it's now, um, I'd say it's midnight. What am I doing here? Let's make some sort of a noise happen. Do you know it's pleasing anyway? Working with paint and dropping it into wet paper. There's something eternally pleasing about that action. So we went and got chips first. I went in, in my pajamas into the chippy. I had a long cardigan on, so but still it was a bit much, wasn't it? And I can see that you're still shaking mad there in front of my head. I've got the iPad set up right in front of me here. And I can see that every time I do anything slightly vigorous the whole camera shakes. So I'm sorry about that. Hopefully it's not too off-putting. I'm doing the background now coming up to meet his hair. And I reckon his uh, growth, his hair, the darkest bit is about there where it meets the forehead. Hmm. This is one of those that, um, at least it, it might be only me telling myself this now, but what I was going to say is it's one of those that's not coming easily. It tends to be that the ones that don't come easily are only that because they say it. And on a different day, the same process might be seen to be inspired. So I'm not going to call it anything. I'll just let it unfold. I suppose the thing is as soon as you start doing something like this you get to know how you're feeling about yourself because you all the stuff comes out like all the criticisms and everything start to start to uh, come out And I suppose there's no harm to know it at least, to know that there's a harsh voice. There's a harsh voice that's kind of close to the surface. It's probably the one that gives out, like, you know, about staying up too late and eating too much and to this and to that and to the other. I was saying in the newsletter today, I was looking at um, an email from a friend of mine She's an artist in Spain and she sends out lovely newsletters. Her name is Alex. She sends out really lovely newsletters. Uh, and in the one I was looking at today, she had included a letter from, I think it must be famous, this lady's letter. She's an 85 year old. It was copied from somewhere. Anyway, she was saying things she would do differently looking back. 
you know, at the age of 85. Why did I start saying that now? Something about being harsh. Yeah, just, I think the main gist of it was give yourself a break. Like she said, she would eat less be less beans and more ice cream. Fewer beans, more ice cream. She would travel more. She wouldn't be quite so hung up on hygiene. It was a nice letter. There was lots of it, lots of inspired meanderings in there, and so that was probably partly why I did decide to go for the drive with Lily when she came in at eleven o'clock, asking to go for a, to go for a drive in the car. I thought, you know what, I might as well. She started telling me about, you know importance of enjoying your life it was as though she had telepathically moved into my head and known what I was reading earlier in the day so she had her argument already planned for how she would get me to do it other times all she does is sing that song from Mamma Mia school bag in hand you know that one where the mum is kind of remembering all the things they didn't do together. Some of them we did, the most we didn't, and why I just don't know. Anyway, she didn't sing that. She didn't have to pull that one out tonight because I actually agreed to go. Hmm. Simon Rebecca is quite a it's quite a character, isn't he? You can kinda of tell he means business there. Alright, I want to soften this area a little bit bring in a little bit of gold <coughs> I think it's sometimes like throwing down a lump of clay the first first um, marks in a painting just throwing it down and punching a few shapes out of it and this is the the opportunity later on then to model things a little bit more so it feels now as though what I'm doing is modeling in clay but instead of clay it's color and that is exciting I'm coming alive to it now a little bit you might you know, you might have sensed a little bit of apathy. I think that's a good word to describe how I began this painting. A bit of apathy. And even though, even as I'm speaking, like I kind of feel like there's quite a few moments there where I thought, oh yeah, you won't be sharing this anyway. Some sort of pressure, I suppose. Like, generally, people who um, have newsletters and all the rest of it want to do the best and be be the most wise, or something. Or people who have YouTube channels, they want each one to be the best one. You know that whole pressure, and it's a bit of a. I feel it in myself quite a lot, like wanting to be seen to be special and really. If you read the newsletter, it'll have all this stuff in it, because <laughs> this is what's in my head today. I was watching Brené Brown speaking about that whole thing about specialness, and she said authenticity is... <coughs> <coughs> no, this is paraphrasing, but she said something like authenticity, authenticity is when you give up the... Um, trying to be what other people want you to be and instead just be yourself. Sounds a simple enough thing, doesn't it? And like most simple enough things, it's actually pretty tricky to achieve <laughs> in a way. 
but I, f I do feel like there's something kind of settling for me in in that edginess of in the edginess of trying to grapple with something out there like grappling with this that's helping me I'd imagine Samuel Beckett would be no stranger to this whole grappling thing for a man to have written what he wrote there perhaps my best years are gone but I wouldn't want them back not with the fire in me no no stranger to struggle I'd say kind of assuming I reckon it's the it's the lot of most of most folk who have a creative career if you call it a career that um, I'm saying this to my friend today that there must be sometimes when you I think by its nature it means that you have to allow yourself to get lost not know otherwise it's kind of repetitive whatever it is that's being done hmm. I didn't know that this would be a colourful Samuel Beckett. I didn't know that. And I didn't know either that I'd feel so hopeless at the beginning there. I felt a bit hopeless. I didn't like myself very much as I was talking to you at the start. Now that I'm settling into myself. I suppose for me, I, you know, like Bernie Brown was saying there, I suppose the painting allows me to feel authentic. It brings me home to something that's more me than any words I've spoken or I kind of carry on. Hmm. I'm quite a distance when I think about it I'm a fair distance away but it's such a profound photograph of him that I think you know the darks and lights are so pronounced that I think I can get away with being that far away and still see what's important here even, even in areas like the eyes I don't feel like at least I don't think I feel like it uh, I need any more detail than what I can see from back here. There's a nice little light there that's falling on the upper surface of the lower lid. So between the coloured part of the eye, between the iris and the skin of the socket below. Well, maybe the eyelash line, the lower eyelash line. There's this area of light. Sorry, but the shaking again. I, I think it's just one of those things when the iPad is attached to the bed. No matter how calmly I'm painting, there still seems to be a bit of a shake. It's quite a wild night. It was wilder earlier. I was getting in the car after I went to a coffee shop and then I had my coffee. Getting in the car, it was really dark. Uh, dark, yeah, but also really windy. Like really windy. I like it sometimes when it's wild like that. He's got a serious pair of ears, hasn't he? Samuel Beckett. Nice, significant shape. 
I've not got my brown on this palette here. I'm trying to bring a lump of it on there because that's keep having to get to the other palette for the brown. There we are. That's enough brown there now. Because I thought it might be helpful to use the dark of the background there to describe the hair and and the ear, which it Actually, I'll need to excavate out of the dark in a minute when it dries a bit because I've painted over where I wanted it to be here. And then here's the side of the face, I think, about there. It's a good, good face to look at. Good face to look at for a length of time. There's things to... There's bump, bumps and hollows that are satisfying to read. Quite comfy too, sitting in my bed. Doing this little drawing. I wonder would I ever be what I consider a proper artist and use my studio and all that. It's not really what I consider a proper artist actually. To me. I think that's yeah I don't know I don't know we'll see we'll see what this year brings 2022 we'll see what that brings see I kind of think I might have like uh, if I had the ambition to get a big studio for myself and paint every day like from the model on good paper and all of that stuff. Sometimes that comes in. I don't see any eye in this socket now. It's a good dark eyebrow shape though. So um what was I saying there about yeah I wonder like I wonder am I doing all I can that whole thing you know uh, could I be doing more different be different and then I was listening to some um, channel or someone on YouTube recently and they said what if where you are is exactly where you're supposed to be what if what you're doing is exactly what you're meant to be doing? I suppose that would signify peace, wouldn't, wouldn't it? Like if you were able to actually fully believe in your worthiness you're, or that you're good enough. Just fully believe that you're good enough without having to achieve anything at all. know you like there's a lot of people there now who um listen and they're very you're very kind and you see nice things in the comments and stuff and I wonder though with myself like if I was listening to myself as a different person I wonder if I would be as kind if I would be saying God does she ever talk about anything on the herself? Stuff like that, you know, those cutting things we say to ourselves. That's all it is really, isn't it? Because I think most people don't really care. They just kind of tune in or they don't tune in. We're all kind of more or less worried about ourselves, I suppose. helps me to sort out my tangle of thoughts sometimes this so selfishly it's um 
even if that's the sum total of its worth, you know, this is quite it's quite a good way for me to start hearing what's happening in my own self. I'd say he's coming, isn't he? You know, I wonder if one day it might be um, a good idea just to do a time lapse and have no no words. And just for you just um, to be able to see the painting happening and uh, much more quickly. And there is a time lapse option in the camera here. I've never tried that, but I, I assume what it does is like I just press play and it speeds up the video. Press time lapse and it speeds up the video. I don't know. I'll try that next time. I'm using a kind of a damp brush in order to lift out like that there now. Brush is a wee bit damp and it's letting me retrieve the light on that side of the jaw there. And same here, I'm just cutting in and I'm wiping away the pigment onto the paper towel. Hmm, don't think that's quite the shape that's there though. Maybe this just needs to come over a wee bit further. Mm -hmm. I've got the water beside me there, so I'm washing off the pigment that's lifted every so often. And we'll go back to this ear. And she and I used to paint together in her house sometimes. I remember us lamenting the boring nature of ears, painting ears. We used both often just leave a space. So I'm reminded now of Sheena every time I think of um, every time I have to paint an ear. She um, understands the pain of that something about it. Noses are a bit like that too for me. But in general I do love the sculpting of the face. The ears are a bit of an afterthought for me, right? Hmm. I'm just going to see if I can see an eye in there. In that other socket. Not really. Not really. Mm -hmm. So maybe if I give myself another five minutes or so. Another five minutes or so and then you're free to go. You're free to go any time. I won't be offended. I won't know. But I'd say um, I'll dot in a few more colours now here and there and then stop.
did speak, didn't they, about fixing, about doing a little bit more to that ear. I think it's one of those things that I get away with. And I don't want to be doing anything that's not necessary, so I'm just tapping away you now at the darks here. I think it does alright, especially when I'm doing it on video. There's it overtakes my thinking mind and I'm just looking for solutions, looking for ways to make to make the painting work. And that's what's occupying my active mind. Or maybe it's just putting my active mind on hold. Because it's maybe a different part of my head that's concerned with the visual. I don't know. For whatever it is, anyway, it is a it is a bit of a break, you know. It's a bit of a break from the activity of the mind. That's mm, no harm, like I think. Not that it's always negative or anything, but it's just always motoring along, isn't it? constant conversation sometimes ridiculous stuff goes on in there right hmm. I'm ending up lifting out that ear after all just a little touch of um, yellow ochre again now, that kind of a colour.
I've been looking at this um, at an angle, like it's angled away from me. So I wonder if I'm after making his face longer than it really is when I hold it upright. It might be out of proportion that way. We'll see. I guess I'm maybe compensating in my head, knowing that that's the case, knowing that he's pushed away that way. I might already be making him wider than I would if it was upright. So hopefully it'll be okay. I'd say my call of the day. There's about a touch of cadmium red in there. Mm, and maybe making the white of the eye less white so that the ledge is seen to be brighter than anything else in that area. It's a bit of a wild, a wild card colour now, but just to darken down the area in there. It's but kind of a quinacridine purpley colour in there. So I didn't want it to compete with the blue that was already there because I kind of like the blue shapes that are in, are in that socket. I say I might be, I might be done. What I said there was done is better than good. I'm thinking about tomorrow. The newsletter needs to be done. And it might be done rather than good. So there's Samuel Beckett, hopefully. Uh, over here. There you go. There he is. Thanks for tuning in. And there's the photo I was working from there. So. There you have it. Good night. Uh, see you another day. Thanks for listening. Bye.